Our next group will be the large family of soft scales, the Coxidae. This is a very large and diverse family with some subfamilies forming ovisacs like mealybugs. Most of these scales have sexual life cycles, but a few can be facultatively parthenogenic. These scales feed in the phloem zone and are copious honeydew producers. The crawlers, settled nymphs, and early form females generally retain the ability to withdraw their mouth parts and move to new locations if needed. Males undergo the pupal stage, then emerge as tiny gnat-like insects that have only one pair of wings, like most scales. Most males also have long, waxy tail-like strands arising from the tip of the abdomen. Many of the soft scales overwinter as second instars, completing their development the next spring. Lacanium scales are moderately large and usually oval or broadly teardrop in shape. They can be copious honeydew producers. Like most soft scales, lacanium scale females can produce more than 100 to 200 eggs before dying. This high reproductive capacity can mean that outbreaks can occur rapidly, especially where insecticides kill off predators and parasitoids. In this image, I'm showing you a lacanium scale female on an oak branch. The female is nothing but a dead leathery covering to all the eggs that have been laid under her body. A group of soft scales are called wax scales. These scales produce thick waxy coatings that cover the females often with distinctive sections. The barnacle scale is appropriately named as the mature females look like true barnacles. Most wax scales are tropical or semi-tropical, but they can occur in conservatories and other interior scapes. The Florida wax scale and the recently introduced fig wax scales are similar in appearance. Males are not found in these species. Outside, these overwinter as mature females that lay eggs under their bodies in the spring. Two to three generations per season can be completed. The crawlers usually settle on leaves where they produce distinctive crowns of waxy tufts. Depending on the plant, the second instars may remain on the host leaves or move to stems. A complete generation can be completed in two to three months. The wax can be pink, yellow, or white in color, and this wax easily melts above 100 degrees Fahrenheit. These scales are easily controlled with contact insecticides or horticultural oils when they are crawlers. But the wax coated scales will need systemic insecticide treatments. The brown soft scale is one of the most common soft scales found on greenhouse plants, but it can also infest landscape plants from southern Virginia across to southern Texas and up the west coast to Washington. While males are known, they are not needed for reproduction. The females are ovoviviparous and swell up to brown half circles when mature. The crawlers are tiny yellow forms that can settle near the mothers or crawl to new sites. This species produces copious honeydew. The entire life cycle takes about 60 days. Green scale is another common soft scale that has been introduced into Florida where it commonly attacks pepper tree and gardenia. However, over 170 plants have been found to be suitable hosts. This species is parthenogenic and the females lay eggs over a two to four week period. The crawlers hatch within a day or two and they generally settle along the veins of host plant leaves. They don't move again unless the host plant leaf becomes unsuitable. This is a copious honeydew producer and ants try to protect them from predators and parasitoids. The calico scale is a very common soft scale that attacks more than 20 species of deciduous trees with sweet gum, honey locust, and elm being the most commonly attacked. This species overwinters as second instar nymphs attached to the bark of their hosts. In the spring, these molt into the females that feed, rapidly develop, and produce considerable amounts of honeydew. As the females swell, they take on their characteristic 
color pattern that consists of several rows of white waxy squares. Females lay the eggs under their bodies that flatten down as the eggs fill the space. By June, the eggs hatch and the crawlers settle on leaf undersurfaces and on the thin bark of smaller branches. As the females die, they tend to lose their distinctive color patterns and become a general mottled brown color. The second instar nymphs move back to the stems in late summer to overwinter. This is one of the few soft scales that can cause considerable branch dieback and even death of small, recently transplanted trees. The terrapin scale commonly attacks blueberry, but it can also be a pest of landscape trees, especially maples and sycamore. Its name is derived because the females have markings that look a lot like a terrapin shell. But there is considerable variability in the markings with some populations looking like other lacanium scale species. This species has one generation per year with mated females overwintering. In the spring, these females swell up and begin to give live birth to crawlers over a three to four week period. After all crawlers have emerged, the females collapse and become brown disc-shaped husk. The crawlers settle on their host plant leaves and undergo two molts. The females move back to the plant stems in early fall, but males remain on the leaves to molt one more time until the winged adults that mate with the females. There are several lacanium scale species, but the European fruit lacanium has become a very common landscape tree pest. It attacks a wide range of deciduous trees, including flowering fruit trees, where it can be confused with other lacanium scales. This species overwinters as second instar male and female nymphs attach to the bark of host trees. In the spring, the female nymphs molt into the females that can swell up to considerable size. The male nymphs molt into a pupa which gives rise to the winged males in May. These mate with the females. After mating, each female lays a mass of white eggs under her body that becomes thin and shawl-like. Crawlers emerge in June and usually settle on the undersides of leaves. They feed here until the fall. At this time, the second instar nymphs move back to the branches before the leaves fall. Fletcher scale is one of the more common soft scales that attacks conifers. It is most common on juniper, taxus, and arborvitae. It is sometimes called the taxus scale. This species overwinters the second instar female nymphs or adult females attached to the stems of host trees. In the spring, the nymphs molt into the female adults, which remains nymph-like in form. All the females swell up considerably by June. At this time, they lay eggs under their bodies. The crawlers emerge from mid-June to July and settle on the flat needles of taxes or on the green stems of other plants. These grow steadily, and by late August and early September, some of the females will produce a second batch of eggs, while other females will simply overwinter. The amount of the second generation seems to depend on the length of the season. The Magnolia scale is one of our largest soft scales. Adult females can be 3 eighths to a half inch across. This species also has one generation per season, but the crawlers don't emerge until August and early September. Like the European fruit lacanium scale, second instar nymphs overwinter on branches of deciduous magnolia trees and shrubs. In the spring, these molt into male pupae and females. A short time later, the males emerge and mate with the females. After mating, the females begin to rapidly swell in size. They produce copious amounts of honeydew and waxy dust covers their bodies. Females produce hundreds of eggs, but those are kept inside her body. She then gives live birth to the crawlers in August into early September. These crawlers settle on one to two year old branches. Because of the late crawler emergence, many landscape managers forget to delay treatments until August and September. 
Treatments in May and June rarely result in significant control of this scale. The Globo scale is one of the smaller Lacanium scales and it is most commonly found on Prunus species. Like most of the Lacanium scales, it overwinters as second instar male and female scales. In the spring, these molt again with males forming the pupal stage and the females remaining nymph-like but larger. The males mate with the females in early May and the fertile females swell up into a ball shape as they lay eggs under their body. The crawlers tend to settle on the thin bark of their host trees and since females can produce over 500 eggs, the infested plants can be quickly covered with scales. Their combined feeding can girdle and kill small to medium sized branches. There's only one generation per season. This lacanium-like scale overwinters as second instar female nymphs attached to needles or bud sheaths of spruces. Norway spruce is the most commonly attacked species in eastern states, but other spruce species can be infested. The overwintered nymphs tend to move to the bud sheaths at the base of newly expanded shoots in early spring. These are mainly females, though males are known. The females don't need to mate in order to produce eggs. Eggs hatch in mid-June into July and the crawlers settle on needles or the thin bark of new shoots. They feed and molt into the second instars by the time that winter conditions arrive. There seems to be only one generation per season and extensive infestations can cause shoot dieback and early needle drop. These scales also produce honeydew that can promote sooty mold growth on the spruce needles. Cottony scales are soft scales where the female looks a lot like a lacanium scale, but cottony scale females produce a conspicuous white waxy ovisac. Cottony maple scale females attach to the branches of silver and red maples but sycamore, dogwood, and honey locust trees can serve as hosts. Overwintered mated females resume development in the spring and produce their ovisacs by late May into mid-June. When the crawlers hatch, they move to leaf undersurfaces, insert their mouthparts along leaf veins, and begin to excrete honeydew. The nymphs molt once, and now males and females can be identified. The males are slender and smaller than the females. By September, the males molt into the pupae and the female nymphs molt into the adult female. After mating, the females withdraw their mouthparts and move back to branches to overwinter. There's another cottony scale on maples, the cottony maple leaf scale. This one looks identical to the cottony maple scale except that the mature females move to leaves to produce their oversacs. Two large soft scales are commonly found on pine trees. The pine tortoise scale is helmet shaped and is an overall dark red brown color with darker markings. The striped pine scale has the same shape but the body has white or cream colored markings. The striped pine scale generally releases crawlers a month earlier than the pine tortoise scale but both can release crawlers over an extended period often from mid June through July. The crawlers settle on the needles to feed and undergo two molts. The females then move back to the smaller branches, but the males pupate and emerge as winged adults in late August into mid-September. These then mate with the females. Mated females overwinter and resume their final development the following spring. The tulip tree scale is our largest soft scale species found in North America. It can often exceed three quarters of an inch in diameter. It prefers to feed on tulip tree, but it can also be found on deciduous magnolia trees where it can be confused with the magnolia scale. It is found mainly in eastern North America where tulip trees are native. Like the magnolia scale, this species overwinters as second instar nymphs attached to small branches of host trees. In the spring, these resume feeding and molt into male pupae and nymph-like females.
The males emerge as wing forms in June to mate with the females. The females continue to develop through July, producing copious amounts of honeydew. In August, crawlers emerge to settle on small branches and begin to feed. Most molt into the second instars by the time winter temperatures stop their development. As a summary, I wanted you to look at this table of many of the scales that we have just studied. Notice that the vast majority of the temperate climate species have one generation per year, with most releasing crawlers in May and June. The only real exception to this is the magnolia scale. This means that most of the soft scales are best targeted in June and early July when the newly settled crawlers are actively feeding. However, the magnolia scale should be treated in September to target those subtle crawlers. Cottony scale females normally look like lacanium scales until they are ready to lay their eggs. At this time, the female produces an ovisac that consists of extremely fine threads of wax in which the hundreds of eggs are deposited. In Ohio, our most common species occur on maples, but there are other cottony scales that occur in warmer environments like the cottony camellia scale. In northern climates, most of these cottony scales have crawlers that emerge in June. The Tumiella soft scales are all in the same genus, and they include some of the largest of the soft scales. The tulip tree scales can be nearly three quarters of an inch in length. And we have two species that occur on pine, the pine tortoise and the striped pine scales. In this case, the ones on pines generally have crawlers that emerge in June and July, but the tulip tree scale has crawlers that emerge in late August and September.